Well, thank you for joining me. Tom Lokes here, Communications Director, City of Marshfield. It is our council preview time, and that is for our next council meeting. It takes place June 8th. That's less than a week here. I got Steve Bark, City Administrator, sitting next to me with all the answers. Boy, I hope so. That's kind of a, a lot of responsibility <laughs> to put on me. By the way, today it really does feel like summer. We've, we've hit uh, that point where it just feels like the, the three months we, we look forward to all year, right? It does, and uh, hopefully uh, soon uh, we'll get some uh, information about our pool opening because I think a lot of people want to know what's going on there. I did post some pictures just today again. I uh, got those. So uh, you guys are wanting to know more about the pool. We, we hope to have a date. Uh, we don't have one official yet, but I just want to let you know that. So Yeah, it'll be great. I mean, Dairy Fest uh, this weekend, now by the time this airs, maybe you'll be in the middle of it or whatever. But uh, people are just excited to get out and do things again, and certainly the new Aquatic Center plays right into that. You bet. Well, let's recap uh, the 25th, I believe that meeting yep. was. It was a long one, almost three hours on just the public side, and then you went into closed session, another hour. Uh, one of the longer meetings since I've been here. What happened, and I know the big thing we want to talk about is the new subdivision, so I'll let you lead away. Yeah, Tom, I think that was probably the most significant thing that happened. And, and again, for those who haven't been with us before, maybe haven't heard about this, in an attempt to jumpstart single-family housing, the city has taken a role that we haven't in the past, and that is we're actually leading the charge to get a new subdivision built. It's 20-plus uh, lots. It's going to be on the west side of, of Marshfield. I think we can actually talk about where it is now. It's, it's uh, off the area of, of 5th and Birchall on the west side. Uh, to, to on the south side there, and uh, it's, it's, it's well thought out, uh, and it's got a lot of planning's been done to make this happen. We, we have a, a basic agreement with a landowner. I don't think there's been signing on the dotted line yet, but there, you know, it's all pretty well laid out that we're going to purchase the property. Um, what was talked about on the 25th was, was securing uh, enough of the pre-sales. And, you know, pre-sale, that's different than actually, you know, signing other formal documents, but it, it is a formal document of sorts where people are saying, yes, I will put you know, $5,000 down, I will agree to, to build by this date and these ty types of things. The council really is looking to get more than half the lots pre-sold before really diving into the water and it appears that Josh uh, Miller, our development services director, has already accomplished this and he's still looking to get you know, more pre-sales. Uh, since the meeting on May 25th, the uh, Board of Public Works has gone ahead and reviewed and approved the plans and authorized the city to solicit bids for the project. So. Uh, everything's moving forward. Ultimately, the hope is to have the infrastructure in place, and by infrastructure I mean streets, sewer, water, those kind of things, and be able to, to begin formal uh, selling of the, the lots and, and, and get some building going by sometime late October. Well, that's just around the corner. Uh, I guess I wouldn't be doing my job, and I don't know if you can answer this, is what's the cost of this uh, uh, Subdivision has that been released yet to the public? Well, I think we've heard that. Yeah, it's been out there in, in formal memos. Okay. I don't have it in front of me today. Sure. Uh, you know, the cost of the land is roughly a quarter million dollars, give or take, uh, for the acreage, and then there's of course all the infrastructure and all the other things that need to be done. I think ultimately the the city's cost is maybe in the area of I think nine hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Uh, we are trying to reduce uh, our cost by getting other players involved, and I believe Josh is having or going to have conversations with Wood County. Uh, Marshall Utilities, uh, look at what, can wastewater contribute some funds because they'll benefit in terms of new users of sewer services, those types of things, and, uh, and, and try to mitigate a little bit. I apologize, I don't have the actual numbers here. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's an extensive cost for the city, and uh, um, you know, it, it's something that we don't take lightly, but we also don't take it lightly when we have criticism coming from various sectors. In fact, there were five people who spoke that night, I believe. Uh, one from the clinic, one from real estate, you know, one from business development downtown, who said, you know what, our growth is being hindered by the fact that we don't have places for employees who come, you know, to, to work here to build homes and live. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're, they're looking outside of the city limits, which isn't good for the city, or they're, they're just saying, look, there's not suitable lots for development. And uh, so it's part of our economic development program to get more lots available. Yeah, definitely, and, and you guys have already uh, did this uh, with with apartment and housing, I think, at one time over by the high school. Some yeah. of that has been done in the past. Now we're looking for single-family homes um, because that's the, the greater demand right now. We don't have them, and uh, hopefully uh, uh, 
Josh is uh, able to uh, pre-sale these, uh, is, and that sounds like he has to have contingency uh, mm -hmm. process here, which probably gets our city attorney involved. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, because, yeah. Uh, you know, we you know all that business stuff isn't so, isn't usually what the city does, but things have changed. We were talking about that about before this program, that the city does need to uh, push a little bit more into this area, uh, and that's why it's happening. Yeah, you know, I think most of us at heart would love to see it be done outside of the city. Why would the city, you know, borrow money and, and be involved in this? It's not normally our, our world to develop property for housing. Uh, but then if it's not happening and if there's a demand for it, we either need to partner with uh, the development community or, or do something to jumpstart it or we're not able to grow. And I think that's what, kind of what we came up to in this. And we've got a couple of council members, you know, Council Member Wagner, uh, someone I, I greatly respect, raising concerns about the amount we're going to invest in this. But I think he's come to the realization too that this is an important need for our community if we're going to continue to prosper and move forward. So it's good to see it happening. Hopefully it'll jumpstart more development in the future. All right. Well, we'll hear more about it as uh, time prevails and moves forward and uh, hear from Josh, maybe yourself, uh, in later council preview programs. All right. We did talk about what was in consent, which is this bid. So we kind of already touched mm -hmm. that with city subdivision. So we can move in uh, down the, the line of our consent agenda, which usually goes pretty fast uh, at our council meetings, but uh, really important items. The one here, a GIS specialist uh, was uh, approved, not the position itself, but a, a job description sent to uh, our McGrath consultant, right? Yeah, um, I believe Dan Kinek, our public works director, actually said that we've had the, the GIS uh, position, the one we have right now that uh, is being done by David Bueller, um, for like nearly two decades. And for those who don't know what GIS is, Tom, it's Geographic Information Systems, and people are probably glassing over right now. Maybe they're taking a break to go get you know, a piece of pie from the refrigerator or something <laughs> as they watch this. But uh, it's, it's critical in terms of what they do for how many users. I mean, you and David facilitate so many departments and divisions. Well, so does this position, including wastewater, uh, Marshfield Utilities, all the departments you know, in mapping and in terms of planning, utilities in terms of, I, I know recently we've talked about how uh, he's been at the forefront of trying to get programs in place for people to report problems and have them rectified, you know, I'm forgetting the name of that program. Uh, uh, there's Survey123 that they use, and then they use their GIS platform uh, for it. There's not really an official name, but it yeah. takes over our, our like our uh, reporting tool. That we Geo reporting was the old name, right? Yeah. And there's a different yeah. name now. They, they really call it just citizen complaint form. Okay. Well, and Dave's done a great job. He's a wonderful employee for the city. But what's, what's coming up now is that there's a, a greater demand for that type of thing, that, that more and more departments are using it. Uh, they, they've got... The more you see something, the more you realize, hey, we could benefit from that too. And so they're looking at, uh, at a GIS specialist. Now, you remember how tight our budget is. <laughs> That's not very hard to think back to you know, seven months ago, right, when we sat in the council chambers. So what he's right now is saying, look, we want you to bless the job description. Let's send it to McGrath. It only costs $130 for our compensation consultant to review the, the, the description and say, you know what, if you, if you do hire somebody, here's the pay range that it ought to be based upon the responsibilities, the education required, uh, the, the duties need to be performed. And so we'll get that put in the pay grade, and then whether or not it ever makes it into the 2022 budget or beyond is up to financial issues. But I think that there's merit to look at this, and I think that's what uh, is happening. And uh, the Finance Budget and Personnel Committee you know, felt that way as well. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, you have to start. This is the place to start. Um, and see where it goes, uh, and uh, I guess we'll we'll find out more when that job uh, description comes back, and and uh, where that goes. Yes, GIS is really a growing uh, yeah. uh, field. Yep. Um, myself, I have a geography minor, and mm. uh, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, and I did the old cartography back in the old oh, wow. days. So uh, I th I'm old. So <laughs> Every, you know what though, Tom? Everything comes back to how fast yep. technology has improved, right? Yep. If you think back to you know you and I and other people from you know, from you know I'm older than you I don't mean to put us in the same place but uh, you think about what technology was and, and and now you look at how it's done it's just you know light years ahead. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm a big uh, I love technology. I've been that way since my my entire life. I had. A, CD player in my car in the early eight, middle eighties actually. So really, oh, yeah. that was pretty early. You bet. I'm, I was always want to be innovative. So you'll see that that I like to do that. We're still spinning the albums at that point. No, <laughs> I said I was. But yeah, you might. I was, be. I was behind the curve. But I am. Uh, I'm moving forward on, on the way we're going. I had an electric That's car cool. even five, six years ago. Are you kidding? Yeah. I don't. Even have, I had a Volt. Wow. I had a Volt for years. Loved it. Oh. So. 
Uh, anyway, well, oh, let's move on. I know we're just chatting oh, that's, here. That, that's interesting stuff. Yeah, yeah, so let's go to our 1% scale adjustment. Uh, there was an approval last uh, at the finance meeting, right? There was, Tom. You know, in the two council meetings in uh, May, for those of you who may have seen them, uh, there was considerable discussion at both of them. Although we spent, you know, over an hour combined uh, talking about compensation. The first presentation, again, by Jennifer Rayku, our uh, Human Resource Director, going through our program. And then I followed, followed up on the 25th, uh, two weeks later, and, and said, you raised some questions. Here's our best answers. And again, I, I think I talked about this last time we met, but it's worth, worth saying. We don't want to talk about compensation all the time. We don't want people to say, is that all you talk about at City Hall is how much you're going to get paid? But we do want there to be an understanding and a commitment to the plan. And, and again, if the plan needs to be modified in some way, let's do it. But we want it known that when we bring forth requests for, for pay increases in the budget or some other way, that we all bought into the plan at its core. So uh, it was very favorable on the May 25th meeting. So I did bring forth uh, at the Finance Budget and Personnel meeting on June 1st, as you said, two part, uh, based upon the things that were talked about the most in those two council meetings. Part number one, a request to adjust, adjust the pay scales 1% uh, across the board for all non-represented employees. So this does not apply to the uh, union members in police and fire. Their pay is governed by their contract. And uh, I'll talk about that in a second. The other one is compression. Um, and we may have touched on this at a previous program, but because you know, the wages have not gone up as much as maybe they could have or should have for non-represented employees, which is management, uh, and yet the police and fire unions have seen increases sometimes greater than that, and that's, that's fine. They, they negotiate their pay and benefits, and they, they do a great job for the city. But we've seen, in some cases, the, the difference of the pay of a management person and a non-management person get, get tighter. And, and therefore, we, we want to make sure it's wide enough to incentivize people to, to consider being a lieutenant, consider being you know, one of the higher-up positions, a deputy fire chief or whatever, instead of saying, you know what, I'm making almost the same money and I don't need the headaches. So what came out of this meeting, Tom, two things. The Finance, Budget, and Personnel Committee did unanimously support the idea of a 1% pay increase across the board, effective July 1st. Uh, and uh, that's, that was actually budgeted in 2020, you remember, uh, and in the approved budget, and then with COVID and some financial concerns that the committee and the council didn't see fit to do it. Um, and then also to have a study team on the side look at pay compression and maybe come back with some recommendations, you know, rather than just complain about the fact it's, it's getting tighter, what can we do? What options do we have to try and address that concern? All right, well, uh, we'll see if uh, the council pulls this out. Um, I, I, it did get approved four to zero, right? I think it was, yeah, four to zero or five to zero. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, so. and, and I, think, I think the thing we really did get from those two meetings in May, which I think was valuable, I think the council does support the pay plan. Uh, I made it clear when I said going forward, we want you to be on board with this, subject to financial constraints. So, you know, if we find out in 2022, um, our finances are taking a hit, I can't stand in front of them and say, wait a minute, now you promised to follow this plan of the letter, because they're gonna say, yeah, that was before we, we tanked financially. So, but I, I am taking them at what I think they told me, which is that if the finances support it, we should be trying to follow this plan as close as we can, because that's why we did the study three years ago. Yep. Well, ultimately, uh, it relies, it, it goes back on you and, and Ron to really make that yes or no on a lot of this stuff. It's, that's a hard part of the job, it your is. job, to say no or yes, even though you'd like to say yes, but physic, you gotta be physically responsible for what you're, what you're doing here. In all these positions, you might say yes yeah. now, you know, where is it? You know, all of us employees are, it, Basically, employees at will. So, right, yeah. I believe we are pretty much. So, yeah. but that's common anywhere. I mean, it's yeah. just that's just the way life it, life rolls. Yeah, let, and, let, and, and actually, <clears throat> um, Ron Alman, our finance director, was asked a tough question mm -hmm. by one of the committee members. I can see you by your nodding your head, and that is something to the effect of, "Do you support this? Can we afford this, or whatever?" Well, you know, here you got a guy wearing two hats. You know, he wants to see the employees, including himself, treated fairly. On the other hand, he knows that the budget process is starting in two weeks, and we got another you know, challenging one. So I think his answer was a good one. Uh, you know, it, it's a tight one. We may be having conversations in October about this very, this very issue, but um, I think they really believe, the council does, and I applaud them for this, that our employees deserve to be treated fairly, that they work very hard. I can't say enough about the city staff that we have, and they support that. 
All right. Um, I could the vacant parks technician position. Just want to touch. Yeah, base just on to that? touch base on this. And, and we were in closed session uh, because you know we're allowed to be for what's going on there. Um, but the deal is our, our, our pool technician uh, is resigning. And so you think about how important that is. Our pool technician. We're about to open Van Hay Waters in a month. So um, anyway, we want to get that refilled as fast as we can. Uh, so we do have an internal candidate who's interested and, and, and appears qualified. So uh, what we want to do is move that individual into the pool technician position and then have authority to refill the parks technician position that he would be vacating. And uh, so because of some circumstances, we, we were allowed to talk about this one in closed session. But uh, that's, that's the heart of it, Tom, is that we want to make sure that we're keeping the, that department staffed. And as I said, nothing's more important right now than having a, a qualified pool technician on board because we've made a tremendous investment in, um, in Van Hay Waters. Oh, definitely. <clears throat> All right, let's move on uh, two more items here before we close out our, mm -hmm. our show here. Um, really a lot of discussion happened last oh. uh, meeting about animals. But is this part of it, this animal impound? It's an ordinance that we have to follow, but how many days I believe that they can keep an animal, is that right? Right, and maybe we, I, I can briefly describe the follow-up from the last meeting, because Karen Rao and, and uh, the, with MAPS and Bob Larson, our ordinance officer, and others have, have been at the podium the last two meetings. And that's pretty uncommon. We, don't, we go long periods of time without seeing those folks. But what was approved on the 25th is it was approved that uh, we would have this new program called Trap, Neuter, and Release, TNR, to try and help control the cat population. I think we discussed this a little bit. It's a one-year trial, and we'll see if it's successful. The other, the other things we were discussed, so one was their contract. And the council blessed their contract in concept. But in the contract, it refers to, this is what was proposed by MAPS, it was referred to this idea that the, uh, the fees would go up, but the premise is that, that people won't be charged anymore in total, including the city, because the number of days that an animal would be held is going to be reduced from seven to four. Well, the council, I think, has bought into the idea that it makes some sense to reduce the number of days held from seven to four. Uh, state law allows it. It has since 2015. Uh, our ordinance officers were initially hesitant to sign on, fearing that, hey, wait a minute, what if, what if Tom Lauks or Steve Barg uh, loses you know, their dog, runs off, and they, they don't know what happened, and they, for some reason, don't call MAPS, they don't, they don't call the police department. And then on the fifth or sixth day, we go out there and we say, oh, do you have my dog? Oh, we did until yesterday, but we, we, we uh, adopted her out to a family in you know, Portage County. Uh, so the thought was we better give every chance for people to claim their animals. But what we heard from, from Ordinance Officer Bob Larson and Karen Rao and others is it's very uncommon. Maybe I touched on this last time. I apologize for repeating myself, but dogs are usually claimed the first day. And cats, if they have an owner, are usually claimed within a day and a half or so. So the council has conceptually approved, approved them uh, six, you know, in support of this, but it's in our ordinance. <coughs> our ordinance talks about a seven-day required hold period. So uh, I've got a prepared ordinance that's in your packet there that says we would, every place that's referred to as a seven-day hold, we would reduce that to four days. I think the council is going to be supportive, but they need to have a little more time to walk through the... Again, government is not fast. Uh, they need to have more chances to think, do we really want to make this a four-day hold? Are there any... Um, flies in the ointment or something that we're missing that we should consider before we formally do it. So the intent is to have the first reading on, on Tuesday and the second reading, if all goes well, on the 22nd. All right. <clears throat> well, that all makes sense, and uh, we'll see where that goes. All that's a first reading, uh, so there will be really no uh, recommended action until the second reading, which will follow. Yep, it will. And I, I want to give some kudos again. I know I do that a lot uh, to, to various groups, but we're very blessed here in, in Marshfield to have great employees and have great people we work with. I can't say enough for the people at MAPS. Karen Rao, I remember I met her soon after I got here. She's a warrior for, for the betterment of, of animals and, uh, and everybody at MAPS does a great job. So we're thankful to have them as our impound shelter. All right, one last thing, uh, CIP. I think a lot of people thought that's done for this year. Uh, it did not get voted on or approved, I should say, right? A voted approved, same kind of idea. Uh, there's still, that has to go through the council. Yeah, you know, the, the process, you know, it's weird. Uh, two years ago, it went very quickly. Uh, last year, we had four meetings. Four meetings, we had a lot of discussion and, and finally came to a, to a conclusion. This year, we had one meeting and, and just the start of another meeting. So what you have, and, and this is in your packet there too, uh, I have the meeting minutes from the last two meetings. Ultimately, the council, I think, approved four 
motions um, you know, to make modifications, to, to pull something out of the, the, the project list. But it really didn't add up to a whole lot. For the most part, I think the council respected the fact that we did a lot of trimming. Um, we, we're not borrowing as much as we have in past years because um, you know, we've got some financial challenges. So the five-year borrowing in the last plan from last year was 19 point something million. This year it's 17 million exactly. And, uh, and so I think the council respected that we, we did some cutting. We kept the main projects in that we needed to, Tom. I mean, East 17th Street, people have been talking about that forever. That's still in the plan for 2022. If you live over there by the <coughs> fairgrounds, you, know, you can look forward to a, a reconstruction of that street from Maple to Peach in, uh, in 2022. But we had to trim some things to make this work. And uh, I think the council was respecting that in terms of the, the discussion that they have. So they'll have the final copy of it you know, um, before them and uh, they'll get a chance to decide if it makes sense to them. And if, if it does, they'll, they'll approve it. That will be our blueprint for the next five years. And I always remind people, a blueprint is different than a fixed document. The budget is a fixed document. If, if one of us wants to make a change and, and, and take $25,000 from here to do something, we need a budget resolution usually. Uh, in terms of CIP world, this changes. You know, we say in 2024 we're going to spend $200,000 fixing this street. By this, next year at this time, we might decide it's more important or less important, and we might have moved projects around. But it is our blueprint that we work from. It's similar to a, a strategic plan in a way. It is right. I mean, that, I mean, it's planning, and and it's not set in stone, but it's your guide. If you don't have a guide, how would you know where to go? Oh, absolutely, and, and I. I do this too often, but I, I, and I'm sorry, you know this, but I always come back to home finances. And, and again, you know, I'll do it one more time because it works for me. I hope it works for some of you listening to me. Uh, if it doesn't, I apologize. But you know, if, if you and your spouse are talking about we, we, need to, we, need to, we need to replace landscaping, we need to fix our driveway, we, need to, we want to go on a trip to Florida, whatever, you, know, you might say we're going to do this project in 2024. And you know, when it gets closer to 2024, you may say, that can wait. We got way more important things now. We got to replace our truck. We got to do whatever. So I hope you don't get too frustrated when you hear that these projects get moved around. You know, I thought they were going to do my street in 2022. Why is it 2023 now? Uh, priorities change based upon needs evolving, and we always try to do the highest priority thing first, as I think anybody else would do in their regular life. I would too, uh, mm -hmm. although my wife might say something different. Uh, <laughs> I'm on the Dave Ramsey plan. It means all debt has to be paid before oh. you get anything because it, you know, it compounds itself. It if does. you pay one and then you can put that to the next one and the next one. By the time you can pay all your debt, you got $700 to put on that credit card every month. It's just snowball effect, she calls it. But you don't get anything. You know, I, I, <laughs> we're not here to promote Dave Ramsey, but I, he's got some really good principles. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and admittedly, uh, unnecessary debt is a, a problem. Yeah, so I, I just had uh, to bring that uh, up. On know. the other hand, we, we spend millions of dollars a year on street projects and we you know, we have to borrow money. It's a, it's a fact of life and, and that's why, at least to some degree, and that's why we try to um, secure the best credit, you know, credit rating that we can get. Exactly. And it, so. it, there are times everyone has to borrow yep. some kind of money. Otherwise, you know, where are you gonna, you're not going to have anything. It's not, the town won't exist. Right. So. Right. And in your personal life too, you yep. can't you can't pay cash for everything usually. I'd like to, but <laughs> yeah, not happening. It's, it's good goal. All right, Steve. Anything else that you want to share? Or we're we're wrapped up on what you gave me. Well, you know, Tom, we go through an ebb and flow here on you know our programs. You know, we went through uh, two or three months there when it was constantly mm -hmm. some of the things we were dealing with with personnel. We had the issue with the police chief and the mayor and other things, and and then we we move into the CIP, and I think we might have a little bit of a lull here for the moment, but I don't think it'll last real long. Uh, before we have some other issues that we need to start dealing with. And, of course, we'll keep people constantly updated on the big ones, the city subdivision, uh, the data, the aquatic center coming into play, uh, some of the planning documents we're working on, and uh, there'll always be more to talk about. Most definitely, and uh, I will be seeking that out from you guys as we move forward. So, all right, thanks so much for stopping by the studio. Yeah, one, yeah, one last thing, Tom. Oh, it's, yeah. never too easy. it's never too easy, I'm sorry. It's never too early to weigh in on the budget process. So if you're watching us on, you know, on any platform and you're thinking, I'd like to see the city spend more money on this or I'd like the city do this in the future, uh, call us, email us, get a hold of Tom, get a hold of me, get it in the hopper. Uh, we are really, believe it or not, starting very shortly uh, in the process of the 2022 budget. 
and we'd like to know your thoughts. Exactly. We already sat down as a group uh, talking about the process earlier. Well, earlier this week would be mm -hmm. one day yep. because we had uh, Memorial Day. So, yes, uh, please send us uh, ideas uh, because uh, this city, we're here for you guys. That's what I always look at it as. We, we work for the public. Uh, so thanks yep. again, Steve. I'll, I'm going to yep. sign off here for our council preview. Uh, tune in June 8th, Tuesday, 6 o'clock. It looks like a light agenda, but, uh, you know, mm -hmm. things can change it. Again, it's only Wednesday. Yeah. And uh, Steve will put the final touches on it, and it'll be out on Friday. So thanks again for watching.